Should I take them off? Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawton from the Flourish Academy. Hey Karen, do you know what day it is? Gee, is it weekly Q&A <laughs> day? It's Friday! It's Q&A day! This is my favorite, I love it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course, we had a mentoring session, yes, so we, we were did. working on some things. For those that don't know you, I know we've Karen's been on live videos several mm -hmm. times now, but if someone hasn't seen, what is it you like to photograph? I like to photograph seniors, high school yeah. seniors. Yes! And you do it very well. Oh, thank you. And um, just recap, in that first video that we did a year ago. A year ago. Remind me, I don't know if I have these numbers right. You were like, one year you did five seniors, and the next year you did... Seven. And then 50. That was it. That was it. So you went from seven seniors to 50 seniors Se in one season. In one season. One season. Pretty remarkable, if yes. you ask me. All with three children and a full-time job. Very interesting. All right, we're going to start with a question from Marie. She says, being a senior photographer, does she, I think she means you, use a senior rep program? If so, does she have any tips on starting one? And if not, then do you have any tips on uh, marketing specifically for seniors and their moms? Great question. So thank you, Marie. I do not use um, a senior rep program. I've thought about it. Heather yep. and I have discussed We've talked about the it. pros and cons, mm -hmm. and uh, ultimately it came down to it's a lot to manage in terms of time-wise, um, meeting with people and explaining your program, but then also um, implementing it. Yes. Uh, I think it comes with the potential for a lot of drama, uh, and there are, don't misunderstand me, there are programs that work, mm -hmm. I just decided it wasn't for me. Um, so if I, say for example, one of your senior reps is on Instagram or Snapchat um, posting inappropriate pictures, what, are you, are you willing to deal with that and confront them? Um, so like I said, I think it just comes with the potential for... Do they do that on the Snapface? The face snap? It's called Snapchat, Heather. I don't understand it. <laughs> but you have to, right? That's where your clients are. Right. Okay, that's another right. topic. But right. anyway, the senior rep, what you're saying I think is a very good point. It's a lot to manage. It is a lot to manage. So I always say when you came to me with this question originally about should I do a rep program, my question to you was do you need to? Right. Do you need to? If you need to do a rep program to get clients and to get things rolling and build a foundation, it's a good idea, for sure. Right. There are really good senior photographers out there that have rep programs that you can actually purchase. purchase. Yeah. So you could look into that and mm -hmm. see if it works for you. Uh, I would say I would exhaust all other possibilities first. Correct. Because I don't want to have to manage. I have a good friend, a senior photographer. She's not in this area. She has a rep program, and there's like, oh my gosh, Karen, probably 10 or 15 girls in her rep program. Oi. I'm thinking 10 or 15 people to communicate with, to manage, to make sure they're doing what they need to be doing. You have to be very organized you do. together, very good with communication right. to have a rep you do. program. Anything else on that? We're good. Uh, she says, if I don't have one, do I have any oh, tips yeah, yeah. and suggestions to, to market to seniors? Uh, well, when I was fortunate enough, my children were uh, in high school when I was building my business, but um, if you don't have access to seniors, find access to seniors. Uh, this is not a time to be shy. What shy. happens to shy people, Karen? They starve. <laughs> Shy people starve. <laughs> yeah, you have to find a way. Um, you know how we talked about your unfair advantage? Right. Okay. Right before you got here, so you wouldn't have known this because presumably you were driving and not watching Facebook. <laughs> no, correct. I did was. episode 220. I said, let's look at your unfair advantage. Who ha Everybody has an unfair advantage. We just have to determine what mm -hmm. it is. So I said, if you're a senior photographer and you happen to have kids that are in high school, that's an unfair advantage. It is an unfair advantage. That's because correct. you have access. You can go to the plays, the musicals, the mm -hmm. football games, everything else, mm -hmm. and meet people and they see you. Correct. So correct. get out there. Okay, so you're saying if you don't have kids mm -hmm. that are in high school, what could you do? Uh, get maybe a youth group. You could go to oh. the church has a youth group. Yeah. Um, or even if you have small kids and they uh, dance or they play sports, chances are there are seniors in that dance studio or there are seniors on that baseball field. Again, not a, not a time to be shy. Make connections with people. Put yourself out there. Um, work it. This is Work it. <laughs> work it. <laughs> this is feet on the pavement. I right. say this all the time. You, do. you cannot build a business sitting behind your computer screen. No, you cannot. You cannot do it. Okay, will you ask me this question from Roxanne? Roxanne says, Heather, I was just watching the Tack Sharp video. How the heck do you get a whole shoot edited in an hour? 
I need to know the secret. And is that about 15 exclamation points at the end of the At least. <laughs> How do I do it? That's been practice and experience. My goal for everybody, I've talked to you about this too, the goal is to get every shoot to an hour edit. Yes. Aside from a wedding. It's a different story. Right. But every portrait session, you should be able to take that card out of your camera, put it into your computer, and have it completely finished and ready for delivery in one hour. And if you're not yet, there yet, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You just need to practice and learn more. This comes down to looking at all those tools in Lightroom, mm -hmm. the minute a photo comes up, mm -hmm. knowing what you want to do to it. Mm -hmm. And that you don't need to mess with all of those sliders. So right. um, this Roxanne is time, experience. Um, Roxanne's taken the Lightroom class, so mm -hmm. she's familiar with it. Um, you need Everybody needs to learn Lightroom. You need to take a class. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's for me. Take a class, mm -hmm. just learn Lightroom, mm -hmm. and then practice, mm -hmm. and you'll get good at it. I mean, lest you want to waste your life away in front of your computer. <laughs> Maybe you do. I don't know. Some people must like staying up till 3 a.m. working. <gasps> oh my goodness. That is not me. Okay. Nicole says she has a lot of questions. Okay, Nicole. Her main question is what do, what does one of your entry level senior packages look like? Do you limit the number of poses per package? Do you include digital files with that package? So my basic, and I just switched recently this year to in-person sales. I, I was a shoot and burn photographer and I abandoned that model uh, this past year and uh, switched to in-person sales. My basic package is um, includes a book because I wanted all my seniors to have a book. Mm -hmm. uh, a nice lay flat book for Millers, uh, 20 of your favorite images. They can upgrade to add more pages, more images if they want. Um, but I wanted to get a quality book in everybody's hands. So my basic package includes a book mm -hmm. and then some gift prints. Mm -hmm. Again, Not the files in that basic package. Correct. Don't. I remember yeah. sitting here last year yeah. talking to Heather about my packages and she says, don't give away the farm. Yeah. Why would you do that? Right. Yeah. So digitals are available for purchase after you've purchased one of my packages. Oh, very important point. You have to pick a package and then the digitals are available for purchase. Correct. Some people don't want digitals, some people... Believe it or not, that's true. Yep, I, yeah. I mean, I have had people pass on the digitals because they said I will never do anything with them. They're wise <laughs> because it's true. Right. Oh, Nicole just joined. Nicole, we're tackling your question right now. <laughs> so she includes a book with her package and the files are not included in that package. You can purchase them separately. Do you limit number of poses? No, I do no. not. I do not. No. How long is the typical session for you? About an hour and a half. Yeah. That's pretty good, right? It is. How many shots do you take during that time? Um, maybe 175. Yeah. How many do you li deliver? Um, maybe 100. Okay, pretty good. And that, that's on the upper end. Um, but my seniors also look at their pictures immediately when they're done and they call their gallery for me. So if you're not familiar with Karen's process, we tackled that in the mm -hmm. first video. So mm -hmm. I'll post the link to that below. But her clients work with her to call her sessions on site, which is brilliant. <laughs> so it takes a lot, a lot of time to say. Really, really smart. Yeah. Nicole says, I need to do some rethinking. Oh, always. I need to set something up with you, Heather. Yes, of course. Yeah, it's all just about reframing mm -hmm. and, and how you're looking at things. Okay, my friend Leslie. Uh, my friend Leslie lived across the street from me back when I lived in the city. Okay. And the city had one stop sign, but there were houses. Okay. So I needed to get out of the city. She still lives in the city. Okay. Okay. She says she loves shooting seniors. She's actually very good at it. Probably because I work with teenagers. She's a teacher at a high school. Okay. How does this workload fit in with your full-time job? Do you shoot year-round with a studio or mainly in the summer and fall? How did you grow so fast? Wow, that's quite a few questions in there. Let's, let's start, start at the beginning. The, the first question was, how does your workload fit in with your full-time job? Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat this one. There's some long days. It's hard. Long days, you know, starting my job at 8 a.m. in the morning, and if I have a shoot that night, and it's summertime, not getting in until 10 o'clock because that's when the sun sets or when it gets dark and you yeah. drive home. So there are some long days, and I'm willing to do that because I know it's not um, year-round. That would be a very difficult pace. Oh, yeah, you keep couldn't sustain it. Year-round, right. right. So um, there are long days. Um, how else? I have a very supportive husband. He, during my busy season, will grocery shop for me and pick up the slack. So having people around you who support, Some support. support they know it's important to you, to, is, is key. Yeah. Um, 
What's the other part? Uh, do you shoot year round? Mainly uh, in summer and fall. Mainly summer and fall. Um, senior season is typically. If you can get into a school district where they don't use your pictures in the yearbook, you you could shoot more in the spring yeah. because you wouldn't have that deadline. You, you wouldn't have the deadline of a yearbook. Yeah. Yeah, so you really primarily shoot in the summer and fall senior years. However, you did just get a new little studio space, and we did a video on it, so you have to check that out, your little she shed. <laughs> so you might do some things there as well, but mainly in the summer and fall. And you can set up your business to fit your lifestyle. That's the whole point of having a lifestyle business, is it should work in your season. So for Leslie, she's... Uh, she works as a teacher full time. Mm -hmm. She also has children, right? And her children are, they're not little, they're getting a little bit older, they're younger than my kids, but I mean, she's busy. She's got a lot going on, so you just have to manage um, all of it. Okay, Desiree says, it's, oh, well, let's go back to finish Leslie's question, because everybody wonders, how did you grow so fast? How did you grow so fast? And that's a great question. I was saying to Heather, I appreciate that question, because I think it's important for everybody to remember where they came from, is to stop and take a look around and say where you came from and how did I get here. So I jotted down a couple thoughts that I can share with you. Um, I want to say two things about this. The things I'm going to talk about are accessible to everyone. It's not like they are for the elite only. Um, anybody can have access to the things I'm going to talk about. Um, and also, it's I can't point to one attribute and say this is it. Yeah. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a multitude of things and then applied daily to my business. Sort of the compound effect. The compound effect. Which is an excellent book if you haven't read it. One of the best. Yeah. Um, so number one is I have the ability to uh, outwork others. I will... Oh, well, like that. You I do will, work hard. I do. I do. I will um, outrun you on the treadmill. <laughs> you, we talked about yes. this. Yes. If you and I get on a treadmill next to each other, one thing's going to happen. Either you get off first or I'm going to die. Right. Because I will outwork you. you, for you and I, we'd be on there for hours. Yeah. But we'd be watching videos and podcasts, and we'd right. probably like it. Right. Not the point. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So, just, <laughs> well, you're the one who, gave, who exposed me to yeah. that, that yeah. saying. Yeah, that's from Will Smith. It yeah. is. <laughs> um, but I just have a really strong work ethic, and um, I just do all I can to learn about photography, uh, personal growth, and self-development. You know, it's immerse yourself in that. Um, if you don't subscribe to Brian Buffini's podcast, I would highly recommend it. It's free. It's so good. And it's full of good stuff. Mindset. A lot of mindset Mindset. Stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, it's excellent. So that's number one. It's just uh, ability to outwork others. The second is um, I have the power of a made-up mind. I made up my mind very early that I was going to um, be a senior photographer and make a name for myself. And that was it. Right. So we don't have the time to go into the science behind the power of a made-up mind. Uh, Brian Buffini, again, has an excellent podcast on that. But the mind is an amazing thing. We should link directly to that episode. That was one of my favorite episodes. Oh. I listened to it a few times, which is you make up your mind that this is just what's going to happen. It's the way it's going to be. It'll, It'll happen. happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And then the third thing um, that really helped my business grow is um, having Heather. Oh my gosh. In, in, <laughs> in my life. Everybody, oh, thank you. You're so, you did the work. Thank you. But everybody needs a Heather. Thank you. They need someone. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You know, if you listen to this, the personal growth and development people, they've all had a, uh, a mentor or a coach in their life. Yeah. That they need, that is one of the reasons they're, the, why right. they are where they are. Right. You need some, because if you're in this alone as a solopreneur and you're dependent on your own motivation, right. it can sometimes be lacking. <laughs> so you need somebody, a coach or mentor, who will not only encourage and uplift you, but someone who will give you a good kick in the pants right. and say, enough, you need to get moving on this or do this. Um, Charlie. Charlie says everyone needs a Heather. Thank you. That's very kind. To be, everybody needs someone. They need someone. It doesn't need to be me. Stephanie says Brian's last name is Buffini. Brian Buffini. The Brian Buffini podcast is excellent. He's in the real estate business, but Karen and I both, uh, actually you found him mm -hmm. and you sent him to me and we listened to him um, basically together because we're always talking about it. We love it, love, love Tuesday. Him. It comes out on Tuesday's favorite day of the week. It's my favorite day Next of the week. Next to quick question and answer day. Yeah. Right. Tuesday and then Q&A day. That's good. Okay, Rachel says, looking for lens suggest... Okay, so we could both tackle this. I pulled this from okay. somewhere else. Uh, what are your favorite lenses for portraits in newborn photography? Mm. 
I have a Nikon D7200. What is your favorite, uh, 7200, sorry. What is your favorite portrait lens? What do you like to use the most? My 7200. 2.8. Um, you'd yeah. marry it if you could, right? If it were legal. Uh, yeah. I'm surprised I don't take it in the bed with me and put it on my pillow next to me. <laughs> I love that lens so much I use it all the time. But really, it's outside. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be able to use that maybe in a studio space Correct. or indoor. I use it in churches because they're big. I use it mm -hmm. outside. Um, what about in your she shed if you were, uh, you know, space constraints? Um, my, a 50 millimeter. Okay, 50. And that's yeah. a prime lens, um, which is different because you have to use your legs. And I, move. I always say, people say, well, then it, it can't zoom. It doesn't zoom. It's a prime. And I say, well, do you have legs? God bless you with legs, right? If that's the case, then you can just jimmy on up <laughs> forward or move on back. And there's your zoom. Christina says, yes to hard work. Every time I hear someone whine about adulting, I cringe. I know, being an adult is fabulous. I can do what I want and work hard. I love it. Okay, so um, for portraits, we're talking about a 50. We're talking about a 7200 outdoor also, for newborns, I will say this. I love having my 24 to 70 2 8. Okay. Because I can work in small spaces. Mm -hmm. I can get wide, obviously. And it has macro capabilities. You can focus pretty close. Okay. So you can get really close to a newborn face. So if we're talking about newborns, I like that. Okay. Will you ask me this question from Christina? Sure. Christina says, I'd love to read about gelling flashes. I usually gel flashes in tungsten situations. But how do I decide whether to use full CTO, half CTO? Yep, or there's quarter CTO. Yep. Okay. Any thoughts on using these? Yeah. So CTO stands for color temperature orange. So light that comes out of a flash is blue. Okay. So if you have a tungsten background, which is orange, yellow, really warm, and your flash is blue, then that will not match your background. So what she's talking about is matching her flash to her background. Okay. So how you decide on what to use, because they have full CTO, mm -hmm. half CTO, and quarter CTO, depends on the background. Okay. It depends on the color temperature of the tungsten background. So I actually have a graphic for this, and I can post this. Um, so if you have... CTO full, it converts daylight to tungsten, so 6,500 daylight to tungsten 32, and then half is 6,500 to 3,800. These are Kelvin K temperatures, and then CTO quarter is 6,500 K daylight to 4,600K. It depends on the background. Also, I think two things here, Christina. It depends on the background, and it also depends on personal preference and style. So I love to take my blue flash the light that comes out of it and turn it warm with the CTO but I don't like it too warm so I tend to land on the quarter or the half I've never used the full CTO that to me is just too orange but some people like that look or it's creative but it really does depend on the background and what that looks like so you would just have to experiment I would say that's not a hard fast science you can't say, and you know what, in different, there are different temperatures some people will say there are different colors of tungsten temperatures mm -hmm. because there are and especially now with leds that are lit mm -hmm. differently it's not like the traditional bulb okay bill of love I, I think we get the point okay alicia says what is one time management tool that has helped balance your day job photography biz and family well alicia that is a great question uh about a year ago it was january right yes it was january i took a time management course with heather it was through a um, a it, was it was through a closed Facebook group. Yep. And um, we did them live. We, we did, did it live. Right. But it was also good because you could go back and watch the video later if it didn't work with your schedule. But one thing that I really remember is um, write down, having daily goals of what mm. you want to accomplish. But it's important to write it down the night before so that you're not getting up in the morning and panicking and being reactive. reactive. Yeah. Be proactive and the night before write down three things you want to accomplish the next day. If you don't do anything else, what are the three things uh, that you're going to yep. do? Um, so I remember that from your course. And um, will you be doing another? Ah, you know I will. Um, I just talked in a video about someone making $25,000 a year more. She got a raise because of that class. Isn't that incredible? Phenomenal. Yeah, we need to definitely, you'll, yeah, there will be more about that. That's actually one of my favorites too, daily success goals. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you, you know, it's the mid-afternoon right now, if you try to write down three things you want to get done today at this point in the day, you You're are done. screwed. It's not going to happen. But if, because you're in reactive mode. Right. From the moment you wake up, you tend to be in reactive mode. If you make that list the night before, three things, and you wake up, you react to that list. Right. And you work on that list. You know what happens when I do that? I get them done by 10 a.m. 
I mean, it's usually done right away. Because you own time. I own time. And you get super focused because you know, oh, I need to do this, this, and this. Boom. Done. If I don't write it down, oh, I'm in trouble. Marie says, I need to start doing that. Yes, brand new planner. It's planner time. Happy planner time. It's happy planner time. I love my happy planner. Okay, Melissa asks, when you started out, what did you charge? Why did you choose that? And how did your price increase affect business volume? She says, I want to increase, but it's not like I have a million people fighting for my time right now. Sad face. I feel like I will lose the few I have. Not sure I can raise yet. This is a multi-dimensional question. <laughs> what are your thoughts on how you chose your first pricing model? Oh, I, when I started out, I was charging um, 200 <laughs> And that was a shoot and burn model. Mm -hmm. um, that, so that was five years ago. Um, and I did raise slowly after that. Um, it, th this is a really powerful question too because there's a lot of self-value. You know, you have to, you need to do a little self-value. Yeah. You know, you have to value what, you, what you're what you offering. In your time. Right, right, right. Um, so I started out at 200 um, and went up. Did I, what did, did I impact uh, my volume? Yeah, did, when you increased, when you started to go up, how did it impact your volume? So that year, you went from 7 to 70. What happened after that as you kind of ticked up in your price? No, nothing. What about that year you did almost 100? I was, I was out of my mind. <laughs> but <laughs> that was after a couple price increases. Right. Your volume actually went up. Right, and actually even switching to uh, in-person, my new business model, mm -hmm. um, hasn't, it hasn't slowed down my business at all. If anything, it's increased. And you know, that comes to a point where, and I know, Melissa, I know you're not here yet, but I will ask people, are you busier than you want to be? If the answer is yes, prices mm -hmm. need to go up. That's a supply-demand question. Right. Okay, if you're not there yet, then there are some things that we need to do to get some volume going before you, you know, I don't think you can think about price increases until you've built your foundation. Correct. I think you should have it in the back of your mind that ultimately, yes, this is where I'm heading. Ultimately, I wanted to be at a certain level with weddings, but I started out charging $500. Oh heck, I did a time for free, you know? I mean, I did my time and then I did $500 and then it was $1,200. I did see a hit when I, I made a big jump at one point and I feel like it was like, I went from 1800 to like 32, something like that, really big. I, I mean, things slowed a little for me. Then let me, this is why you need Heather, because she will meet you wherever you are in the season of your business and the season of your life. And it depends. Right, right. It depends. It depends on what your goals are and what mm -hmm. you're going after. There is no one size fits all. There really isn't. It depends on your finances. It depends on your level of uh, risk tolerance. Right? Uh, your level of fear. How do you feel about this? Mm -hmm. Or, uh, I don't have a lot of fear. I just kind of go for it. You know, if somebody says no to me, you know what I learned recently? Do you want to hear this? I just learned this. No means, it stands for next opportunity. That's so fine. if somebody tells you no, that's fine. Moving on. Next opportunity. opportunity. I yeah. like that. Isn't that clever? There was a Brian Buffini one about, there's a book called Yes and, or... Yes, and like you're, oh yeah, like you're no. waiting for the next thing. Like right, what's and next? What, what's next? Yeah, yeah. or my, one of my favorite books by John Maxwell. I don't know if it's up there. It might be downstairs in the library. But it's called Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn. <laughs> ah, you always learn. Uh, that's a really good question. Okay, she says I I want to increase, but I don't have a million people fighting for my time. All right, then it's not time to increase. And you know, you don't want to lose what you have. Correct. You just want to focus on creating an amazing experience with the people you have right now. Right, good point. And build that foundation. You built an incredible foundation. When you went from those few to the many, I mean, right there, you laid the groundwork. Right there. Oh, and and oh, then... Over deliver before you... Over deliver. Give them an experience that will have them talking. Um, it's... Very important. Yes, word of mouth. Word of mouth. I was just looking at, to see if there were any additional... Okay, while I'm scanning... Oh, Stephanie says, Heather, do you have a list of your favorite books? Oh. Oh, how long do you have? You better brace yourself, friend. <laughs> there are a lot. I mean, I started this when... Um, okay, this is how it started. Evan just turned 10. 
when I was pregnant with Evan, I was shooting 30 weddings a year and I was out of my mind. I was, I was afraid. That, that, you could say I had fear. How am I gonna get this all done? Mm -hmm. I was in the delivery room with a book called Getting Things Done by David <laughs> Allen. And they were laughing at me like they're, they're starting to put um, my IV in for Pitocin because I was induced with him. And I'm like, hang on, I just got to get, just let me get through this chapter. I got to figure out what I'm going to do when I take this baby home. Oh my God. Like I'm out of my mind, right? Okay, so Evan was born and in the end, you know, those first few months were crazy. But that was when I started with a book a week. A book a week. Okay, mm -hmm. Evan's 10. Wow. So do the math. Do the math. That's a lot of books. These shelves are filled with books. The downstairs shelves are filled with books. Um, I do have my favorites mm -hmm. for sure um, and periodically I release those but thank you Stephanie I will do that I will put them on a list uh, a book reading list Mar and I talked about her forming a book club in the FA community oh I like we, that yeah, yeah so she's going to try to do that she's also very busy with her business which is skyrocketed so um, we'll try to fit all of that in but I do have a few favorites mm -hmm. okay that's a great question mm -hmm. from this year do you remember one of yours that, that really stuck out for you um, I read John O'Leary's book on fire, and if you're not familiar with John O'Leary, um, Brian Buffini interviews him. He was severely burned when he was oh gosh seven, uh, told he wasn't gonna live. That story, oh, when the first time I heard that story, be prepared to cry. It's a very moving story. They were, he was given no chance to live, survive at all. What was he was burned on like ninety percent of, of his body, right? Third degree burns on 90% of his body. He was playing with gas in his uh, family's garage and caught the house on fire. Kaboom. So um, I read his book and it is called On Fire and it's Seven Decisions. So I do remember that book. Um, it stuck out for you. Yep. Yeah. It, absolutely. I'm trying to think of one that I loved. I read uh, Charles Duhigg's books this year, uh, Smarter, Faster, Better, and oh. The Power of Habit. Both of which I loved, but Smarter, Faster, Better rocked my world. Really? Loved it. 12 Week Year. 12 Yes. Were, yeah, yeah, that was a really good one. Anything by Andy Andrews, The mm -hmm. Seven Decisions, A Traveler's mm -hmm. Gift, very, very good. Um, Stephanie says, slower time of year, hoping to read a bit. Absolutely. Um, reading to me, I make time to read like I make time to exercise. You have to make the time. Ten, ten pages a day. It's ten pages a day is ten minutes. You mm -hmm. can do it. I actually took a speed reading course earlier this year so I could get faster. <laughs> a book a week wasn't enough for me. <laughs> so I thought, I have to get faster. I have to get faster. Um, and I did get a little bit faster. Not, I'm not a speed reader, but at least ten pages a night. At least. And you would be, I mean, you have the power of the world at your fingertips mm -hmm. in these books. It's incredible what you can learn. Marie says, speaking of books, do either of you listen to audiobooks? Yes, I do listen to audiobooks. Um, I will say this. You raise a good point. She says, while you edit. What do you do while you edit? Do listen you to podcasts. Podcasts. So while I edit, I do podcasts or YouTube videos of high performers, entrepreneurs. I have a, a series of YouTubers mm. that I follow, um, as well as the podcast. Either one of those is what I do while I edit. Audio books for me are a lot of times on long road trips. Okay. Because I can listen to a whole book. So I listened to David and Goliath this year on our way to Florida. Mm -hmm. Malcolm Gladwell, anything by Malcolm Gladwell, Seth Godin, these guys mm -hmm. will rock your world. It was fantastic. I love that book so much. I actually went out and bought, bought the book and read it again. It was so fascinating to me. Um, so yeah, audiobooks. Any like to me, Marie. Every minute of my day is about edifying my brain. And don't think I'm like crazy or extreme. I just love to learn. She's voracious. Oh, it's insane. And then, and the reason I do it, because I love to share it with you, right? I love to say, Karen, you won't believe what I'm learning. You gotta check this out. But, and I do that for everyone because to me it's so fascinating. Right, and that's that's one of the reasons she's so helpful is she just soaks it all in. Uh, and I keep, a sponge. I love it, thank you. And you said, you gave me a tremendous compliment earlier this year. You said, you're always growing and learning. You are. Thank you for saying that because that, that's like my number one rule for myself is always be like something into my brain. I'm not saying I don't occasionally watch a mindless show. That's important too. Sometimes, but it's pretty rare for me. And I only do it because the kids want to do Although it's Christmas movie time. I oh, yeah, right, right. Charlie says, yes, Heather would love some lists of recommendations for books and audiobooks. Um, so I give out these recommendations all the time. I work with my private mentoring clients, but I'm gonna tell you something, Charlie, straight to your gorgeous face. I really like it when people ask me for recommendations and then read the books. Anytime mm -hmm. I have recommended a book to you, you have read it in short order. And right. then we talk about it, we grow. Okay, if I'm trying to help you, right, and you don't read the book, I can't be helped. I'm moving on. 
I mean, I don't, I just, it's not that I don't have time for that, but I really focus my efforts on people who want to grow and learn. And if I'm trying to help you mm -hmm. and I say to you, if I have a mentoring client that is stuck in a particular mindset and I say, I have a perfect book for you here, go read it. And they don't read it. What else can I do? Correct. She says she's going to read it. Look, okay. she gave Charlie little, will do it. Charlie will do it. Kissy face. <laughs> Charlie's a very hard worker. She'll do it. Any last minute questions, you guys? Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. This is me. my favorite day. I know. My Care favorite day. day. My favorite day, too. <laughs> I mean, Heather Day. Yeah, we have so much fun. We do. Yeah, I'm so impressed with you. What's one thing? Let's leave them with this. One thing. Yes. That you're super excited about for 2018 that you can share. Super excited. So, um... I want to do mother-daughter shoots. Ah, yeah. We haven't talked about we this have. here. Yes. We have, but not here, yeah. To fill in my senior season, mm -hmm. I've got some big goals for next year, and um, I just, it's, it's something, if you were to offer me a picture of me and my mom and my sister, oh. I would take it in a minute. Oh, I, I just, love they're that. so priceless. So I'm really excited about mother-daughter shoots. Um, I've been following Sue Bryce, and she's a great photographer. Check her out. Um, just that some portraits, you know, not outside, inside, in my shed, yeah. capturing those so you can hang them on your wall for generations oh, to come. Oh my gosh! You know, my friend Brooke just joined, and she has she has four kids, but she has two daughters, right? And she's very close with her mom. I could see I photographed her wedding. I could see her with her mom and her two daughters in your she shed. For a beautiful shoot like that. I can see that. I think you'll be really good at it. Well, thank and you. I think that you need challenges. Like you, I do. Yeah, you would get bored <laughs> if you had to do the same thing over and over again. So a challenge is good for you, which is why I hold your feet to the fire all the time and say, Karen, what's next? That's right. <laughs> hey, you guys, have a great weekend. Continue to flourish. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.